Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted, the legal edition. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm Alan Haley. And today is November 22, 2017. Okay, before we start, happy Thanksgiving to our viewers. We want to thank you for sticking by us all these years through the thick and thin. And we're going to talk a little bit about the thin. Um, the Supreme Court from the uh, Diocese, of, in the case of the Diocese of South Carolina, has come back uh, with a decision on the appeal to the repeal of the appeal, uh, whether or not they should have had their justice stand down. And I thought, well, we need to get Alan on the program to give us the minutia and the future, because it's not over yet, um, but it's, it's not good news. Uh, because you would think of all the courts in the nation, South Carolina would be above the fray. That this wouldn't be something you have to worry about uh, with them because they would want to do it right. They would want to appear uh, above repute. They would want to uh, have jurisprudence and everything on their side. It didn't work out that way, uh, sadly. Well, and so let's, let's get the lowdown. What's really too bad is that South Carolina started out, it was one of the first um, courts in the nation to rule that the Venice Canon had no, absolutely no effect in the state. It, it got it right the first time around, but now it's made a hopeless mess of things. Mm. And what the latest uh, action is, a, or inaction by the court, you could say, is uh, a typical now of how divided and fractured it is, because now the Bishop Lawrence and his parties made two motions. They moved to recuse Justice Hearn and they moved to have a, a petition for, to grant a rehearing of the case. And both those petitions were denied uh, at the end of last week by the court in short opinions, but the opinions are very revealing in the sense that, uh, first of all, the motion to recuse Justice Hearn uh, was totally misunderstood by the justices. Uh, they treated it as they said it came too late. She's already made her decision. Well, of course she did. Well, uh, it, are, are they doing that on purpose, though? I mean, we, we're saying well, that they, they're misinterpreting it. Is that just their way around this? Yeah, and it, it's kind of like, well, I don't think they got it because, in other words, all the motion for recuse uh, was asking was that she be recused in the future for the mm -hmm. rest of the case and not particularly vote on the petition for rehearing. And that, um, so... By denying that motion on the ground, it was too late. They were, it, it didn't make sense because it's not too late. She, you know, at the time the motion was filed, she had not yet decided or acted on the petition for rehearing. And lo and behold, what she did was she did recuse herself after first voting to deny the motion to recuse. <laughs> so we have someone who says, no, I'm not going to not going to recuse. This isn't worth of recusing, but oh, yes, I will now recuse myself. And when you look behind the scenes to figure out what's going on there, it's patently transparent, I'm sorry. Uh, this is what I would call a hit-and-run maneuver, because what she did was she voted to deny the motion to recuse, then she recused herself, so she didn't vote on rehearing, and that meant that there were two justices to two justices to, to vote on the rehearing. Two wanted to grant it, and two didn't. And so there's a tie vote, and so what? guess what? The petition for rehearing is lost, because... Well, uh, the, the the ira there's a, something ironic here, and that is this is justice of, of the minority. Yeah. You know, there, exactly. There's been no majority at all throughout this process saying, oh, no, we can't have a, a rehearing, or no, uh, the, the diocese is in the right. I, I mean... Yeah, that's part of the problem why this is what's called a denial of due process. Yeah. The federal Constitution says you can't lose life or property without due process of law, and that due process of law means all the procedures are followed, and you get a fair hearing and a fair trial, and they didn't get that in this case. Okay. Well, so, you're, you're going to leave it a few minutes to go see your daughter for Thanksgiving. What is the future? I mean, it's never the, over. Right. The future now is they will take a petition up to the United States Supreme Court, and hopefully they'll be joined by the uh, professor and the, and the attorneys who filed the amicus brief uh, just before the last week in the South Carolina Supreme Court, this is Professor McConnell from Stanford, who's an expert in First Amendment law, and uh, the attorneys who uh, in Washington D.C. who also handled the appeals for the uh, uh, Christchurch in in Savannah, and the 
um, in in a, I'm sorry, not Savannah, is it Atlanta? Anyway, I can't it's remember. Like that. It's okay. Yeah. It's before well, dawn in California. You're allowed to get that one wrong. <laughs> in any event, um, they are some good, really good attorneys, and hopefully they'll help out on the petition for certiorari with the United States Supreme Court because the pitch to the U.S. Supreme Court is going to have to be this was a denial of due process. It doesn't have to do with South Carolina law um, or state law or anything like that. It's just saying this was an outrageous denial of due process because this justice was totally biased. She, as in effect, has admitted it now by recusing herself. Uh, she's admitted that the validity there is of the a bias, yes. And so then the, um, but she still participated and hung in there and to make sure that the case was went her way before she finally got out of the case. And that's, as I say, that's just gross and it's not right. And then the other thing is that the, there wasn't really an opinion in the case. Now, there were five justices each writing five separate opinions. And you have to put, put things together by pulling this and this, and even the justices themselves don't agree in stating what the results of the case were. So it's... Okay, well, it's, w when you get an opinion, you're supposed to get an opinion of the court, which is exactly. always a majority. Um, in this case, we got a divided minority. Is this going to kind of allow for the Supreme Court to say, yeah, after how many we've had five petitions in ten years for property ch church property cases, is this yeah. finally going to get them? All right, there's a mess here. We need to do something. I would hope that's the case. Okay. I never do be sure because... we want the new Episcopalian to recuse himself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Justice Gorsuch is an Episcopalian from Colorado, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. So that'll be interesting to see because he's very conservative. Yes, he's conservative and, and may completely be on our side on this. Uh, I know. It, it, and this is why the the great saint <laughs> Paul said, don't go there. Yep. Don't go into the courts. It, you know, First of all, we fight a battle of spiritual and principalities, um, and you, you just don't need to go there. And, you, know, and uh, you can see how ill-equipped the courts are to deal with religious property questions. Oh, yeah. like, they're all over the map on this. Everything from saying the Dennis Cannon is the rule of law that was approved by the Supreme Court. That's the state of Connecticut, your own state, mm -hmm. uh, which held in, in the Gauss case that, uh, yeah, if the Supreme Court said that we have to let churches govern themselves, and that's they're a special class of people, so they get to detour around the regular property laws and don't have to do what everybody else has to do to make a trust. And that's the you know that's the one extreme. The other extreme was South Carolina at the beginning in 2009 when it held that the Dennis Cannon had no force in effect and Texas has held that and Illinois also. Well Illinois is the I think the big win because yeah. I think you know that the judicial system there is well I was gonna say corrupt now we have a new standard with South Carolina I mean you would expect Illinois to, to flip and go all tech and well, to, to, to see them you know do it right was amazing. Would you be surprised to know that the litigation is still going on in Illinois? I did. No, I thought we won. We won, uh, but uh, they they filed that in suits now against the parishes. Uh, we won on the diocese, and but now tech is going after the. You know, Michael um, Curry has a lot to answer for. What he's he's just allowed the the legal team to continue what they've been doing, and it's it's terrible. Oh, it is. I mean, uh, he's put a face on the Jesus movement, and the Jesus movement is about suing people. Thank you. Yeah. Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, uh, for your time and efforts in this. All right. Well, I'm going to let you run. We've given people enough information and encouragement. Uh, I do suspect we now have the best chance to have the Supreme Court take it up um, right. because it, you can't make a bigger mess of it. No, you can't. And, of course, the Supreme Court doesn't sit there to right wrongs. It sits there only to make law in cases that it chooses for, to, and so. But if ever was a case crying out for it, this is one. Well, I just have to see and keep your hope and prayers. They have 90 days to file the petition for certiorari, and uh, then after that, it'll be a couple more weeks or a month or so when we know what the Supreme Court does. Well, for the last 45, 50 years, I've seen the Supreme Court try to right wrongs. You <laughs> said it's not their job. It seems that it's their only desire is to uh, to make up for what they think the Constitution lacks. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> Air Force can be quite a splintered court there too, uh, five to four. But uh, I, I, we'll have to just see. I can't predict it because they've turned down so many church property cases that uh, yeah, it, this is not quite the usual church property case with this strong due process element in it. That's the difference. I was encouraged by the overwhelming vote for free speech and uh, the the not throwing away uh, what they called hate speech. I, it was a, a vast majority, only two dissenting judges. I, of course there's two. Yeah, but, you know, it's the way it is. Uh, Alan, have a happy Thanksgiving, safe travels. Uh, give your daughter a big hug and a kiss for us at okay. the Unscripted Viewer Land. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Alan Haley. And you've been and watching... Script. Yeah, I'll, I'll give her... You're yes. tired. Uh, episode... 336? 4? 5? 346, right? Yeah, something like that. It doesn't matter. It's before dawn. <laughs> <laughs>